back at it with the basketball addicts talking NBA hoops. Doc Rivers and Stan Van Gundy, SVG. They're an elite club because they are both coaches and members of their team's front office. The reason I bring this up is because I wanted to also Popovich used to have that status, but he got sick and tired of that. He gets sick and tired of a lot of things at his age. But the reason why I bring this up is because we've seen in recent time with Para and Jaeger, with Lionel Hollins, coaches and GMs don't get along at times. And now certain coaches, Stan Van Gundy, he held out to it till he got a job where not only was he the coach, but he also had a say in the front office decisions because of what happened with him and Otis Thorpe when he was in Orlando. But ultimately, we know players have the power in this league. If a player doesn't like a coach, he can go to the GM and he can say, I don't like this coach. If he's a good enough player, get that coach out of there. Or if the coach doesn't like the player, he can go to the GM and say, this player's not working for me. Get this guy out of here. When the coach and the G, is, is the GM, is that a good or bad thing for the league, Dan Gladman? Well, it, it depends. what the, the anecdote that you're giving about going to a GM and saying, I want this coach out of here, and the NBA has a lot of history with that. But it depends who that coach is, and it depends yes. who that player is. The guys who we've looked at as example, examples here, Stan Van Gundy yes. and Doc Rivers, are well-established NBA minds. You know, nobody's going to be able to do that to Doc Rivers. Nobody's going to be able to but do I don't that know. to Stan. It happened Van to Stan. Stan got played out in Orlando. Yeah, but Dwight right, but right now, out. right now he's in a situation in Detroit where he's in charge of everything, and I do think it is it is better for that organization because if you look at the past, you know, the GM situation has been terrible, and he's he's D Dumars fired like six coaches yes. in eight years or something like that. So I think. For Detroit, for the league in general, this offers a, a, a means of stability that, if it works, is going to be a model that gets copied. I, I think this trend could pass out, Corey. Your thoughts? Are, are you a fan of that? Like I agree. I agree with him because um, I think um, the GM coaches situation could get could get like. Remember, um, Darren Scott, Williams. Huh? Darren Williams has been yeah, axing yeah, yeah, coaches yeah, left, yeah, right, yeah, and center yeah, in yeah, the with NBA. Jerry Sloan. And, yep. Yeah. So I, I think it could be good. Stan Van Gundy is a good coach. He, he coached. Coach. He, 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 had, he did a good job in um Orlando, and um Doc Rivers. You know, he got a chip in on um, Boston. I, I think it's a good decision. Now the, the old saying goes, "Absolute power corrupts absolutely." So how do you, like, do you think that that's a good position to put a coach in? I mean, you have more experience with high-level coaches than I do. So you tell me. You know, I think it's I think it's cool if it works, but I also think it has to do with the owner. If the owner feels like he trusts the coach and he's a great coach and he can manage a team, then I mean it, it could be a good marriage. But at the same time, what if the what if you have a situation like that? The coach is the GM, and you have a solid group of players yep. that need change. Yeah. You know, need leadership, new leadership. The coach not firing himself. <laughs> <laughs> he's there. He say, all right, let's trade all these guys exactly. and I'll bring some new guys here. And that's the danger. So, I mean, it could go either way. It's a, it's a slippery slope, of course. And now there's another side of it, too. I mean, Dan, let's talk about free agency. Let's say you're going into free agency now. You're a, you're a player. Are you looking at the teams with the coach and the GM the same as you are looking with a team that has a separation of power mm. where it's kind of easy to do things? You're, you're looking at the team where you can get the most money. <laughs> Your agent is, at least. <laughs> and you're looking at a team that's got a winning situation. And maybe a, a guy has a favorite city or a specific location where he wants to go. But I think... I don't think that's going to be a, come into play for these guys, for the free agents. So, so, okay, now I have another question here. What's happening in New York? Why is no one taking that New York job then? Because, I mean, that's kind of a similar scenario where you know that James Dolan has discouraged people from even touching the Knicks brand because he meddles so much. And Phil Jackson's come in there, and people expect, expect that Phil Jackson will have the autonomy to do what he wants. But no one's taking the job. Well, the job's been on the table. Some people maybe think that Phil's going to go down and do the coaching himself. Or if you are the coach and things don't start off well, the, the shadow of Phil is there over your shoulder. But the one thing I heard which so sort of makes sense is that Derek Fisher is going to end up as the coach there. So they're just waiting for the playoffs to end. Are you surprised no one's taking the New York job yet? Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of surprised because um, Phil Phil keeps on asking for the triangle or he wants a coach to coach the triangle. I don't, is there too much in, input? Yeah, input? yeah. Is I, that the problem? Because you can't tell a coach what offense to run if you want him to coach the team, I think. I think you should just hire the best coach um, possible, like our available yes. best coach, and then I think you just should let him do the – or Phil should coach, you know what I mean? Like Mark Jackson's out there. There's a lot of good coaches Sh out there. You know? Shouts out to Mark yeah, Jackson back in the Mark. booth. I'm loving him back in the booth. Now – Back to you, Brady. I want to get your thoughts on this. Simply put, I mean, we're seeing, like, 
I, did, are you aware of what happened in Memphis with the para, the owner? Like, there's some weird things happening with owners. Owners have a lot of power. James Dolan's probably been the worst example. Do you feel that that's playing out in New York? That's why no one's taking the job? I don't know. I mean, maybe like he said, they're waiting to, to see if Derek Fisher wants a job. I honestly thought, uh, you know, I was surprised when Steve Kirk took the Golden State job. I, I thought, you know, Phil coached Steve in Chicago, Phil coached Derek in L.A. I mean, so either of those guys, that could be a good marriage. You know, they have a good relationship. Phil can have his input and kind of bring them up in the coaching world. So, Or is Melo kind of like the problem here? Without Melo under contract, does that discourage coaches or maybe no I'm one sure wants to? I'm sure a lot of guys would still, lo would still love the opportunity to coach Carmelo. Yeah, yeah, of course. Melo's so. top five, one of the best players in the league. You think Melo's top five still? Yeah. Why not? Scorer for sure. Yeah. Scorer. I'll put him in the top five scorers. First year out of the playoffs. Okay, okay. All right. and, <laughs> I, I, another situation I want to address quickly, um, Lance Stevenson. I love Lance Stevenson. My boy, too. Has he gone too far? <laughs> nah. You, you, you think he's still, he's, his head is still in basketball right now? No, he playing. I think he's, he's comfortable. I think when he's not doing anything, I think he's off of his game. <laughs> this guy is the wildest guy I've seen play hey, basketball look, he's, he's a nice player. <laughs> he's really improved. He's shown a lot this year. But is he a, cha a championship caliber player? I just, I just don't see it. Well, hey, I see his, his act. I'm starting the Lance Stevenson love campaign. Thoughts on Lance Stevenson? I'm going to go around the city asking people. <laughs> I think Lance Stevenson, when he came in the league, nobody would have said he would have matured this fast yep. into yep. a player that he is. Yep. I still think, obviously, he does immature things like he did last night messing mm -hmm. with LeBron. But at the same time, he's trying to play the mental game, get the edge. But, I mean, you can't knock him. He's starting on the Pacers. He's can't doing his knock thing. the hustle. <laughs> Gotta love him. Hey, listen, thank you guys all for coming out and doing the hangout. We love you guys. Quickly, it's time for me to do the parting shot. And uh, Stephen Curry got the Kia Community Assist Award. I just want to send some love to Amir Johnson. You are my Community Assist Award. You do the biggest. You do it the most. You rep for Toronto. We got so much love for tall money, Amir Johnson. That does it for another episode of The Hangout. I'm Akil Agassi. We'll see you next time. Peace.